Part three of our series about stairs, we're going to talk about special stairways, curved stairs and winder stairs. They're, they're very unique, very beautiful in a home nowadays, but there are some special rules and special ways to measure these things. Uh, like I said earlier in our part one of this series, curved stairs are a beautiful, wonderful thing in a home. And everyone, when you walk in, you look at that and you just kind of go, wow, that's really cool. Trim carpenters and framers spend a lot of time getting these to look good for us. So what does, what are these mythical creatures? So what if the treads are not rectangular? You know, we like things at 90 degrees by golly, and then there's nothing at 90 degrees on these types of stairs. So whether it's a winder stair that I'll explain here in a little bit, or if it's a totally curved stair, maybe 180 degree curve, you know, anything can happen. So let's look at these rules. The code book in 311-7521, blah, 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 in this section up here on your screen, winder tread shall have a depth not less than 10 inches, kind of like a regular stairway. There's the tread depth of 10 inches. But hey, where do you measure that from? I mean, that thing's a fan shape. I'm sure it's 10 inches somewhere, but they tell us. Measure between the vertical planes of the foremost projection of the adjacent tread at the intersection of the walk line. Boo! Okay, head explosion. I'll show you here in a second. So, but it does mention here intersection of the walk line. Before I finish this paragraph, let's look real quick at what they mean. What walk line? And they define that. I mean, it's a bunch of words again, but I'll zero in on this. The walk line shall be located 12 inches from the inside of the turn. So we're looking. Usually you're going to grab the handrail on the inside of the curve. Not many people take the long part of the curve up the stair. So they say the walk line is within 12 inches of the inside turn. The 12 inch dimension shall be measured from the widest point of the clear stair. The stair might be 48 inches wide, but with the handrails and different things and this, it might just be 38. So they're talking about the clear walking surface. So what does that mean? Let's tie back into winders now. Winder tread shall have a tread depth of not less than six inches at any point within the clear width of the stair. So we're going to go into that and guess what else they say? Guess, look at there, there's the 3 8 inch rule. Uh, the largest winder tread depth, the walk line shall not exceed the smallest by what? 3 8 of an inch. So kind of like what we talked about in part two of our stair series. So let's look, what walk line, why, what's all this mean? Let, let's take a look at some diagrams. So here's my, here's my 180 degree curved stair. Beautiful stairway in the entry of the home. And so they're telling us the walk line is a mythical invisible line, 12 inches from the inside radius. So it comes out here and then it goes up each one and all the way up the stair. That's the walk line. And if you ever notice when you have a handrail, look down at your feet, you're about 12 inches away from that wall or whatever that handrail is attached to. So the 12 inch rule is based on something. So then they also say, hey, we also have this rule. So we've got the mythical line, but it also says none of the treads within the stairway can have a dimension less than six inches wide. Alrighty. So I'm going to measure all these things at the small end, you know, along here, Lord, there, there, much more than six inches, but at the narrow end, they can't be less than six inches, every single one of them. So when we look at that, that applies to winders. Here's a winder. I go up, there's my, my creature there, there's the walk line. And then I go up the winder and then up the walk line and that's it. But I will give the framer a red tag and tell him to tear this down. This is an illegal stair. I drew it this way on purpose just to, you know, have something to talk about. But do you see what it is? Right in here. Do I have the six inches per tread? No, I do not. This is in a real world. I grew up in a house like this. This is a straight drop for four risers. It was a straight drop about this big, but you can't have that. Each one of these fan shaped winders must follow the rules, which means down here, six inches and then fan shape. So, that would be a bad stairway. So back to our walk line on the curved stair here. So I call it the 12 inch, 10 inch rule. And that's it. all that wording back on that other slide 
from the code book basically is just saying, hey, take the walk line out here at 12 and this line here, that's where you're going to measure your 10 inches. And you're going to come along and I'll show you that in a second, but that's where we measure it from. Not over, not at the big radius, but at the small radius, 12 inches in. So here's me. I'm on a finished stair. Here is the mythical walk line coming down. This is the small interior radius. And then here I'm measuring in my book, I measure on a stair like this from picket to picket would be in my book, the walking width of that stairway. And I would measure in 12 inches and that's where I would measure my 10 to make sure the tread is correct. And then here's just looking from the top of that same stairway to give you a different perspective on it. But 12 inches in, 10 inches on a spot on the uh, circular or the winder. So this is what I'm doing. So I come in here, measuring from there, 12 inches. I measure that 10 inches or more. I'm happy. I keep on moving up or down the stair as I'm measuring. And this is me doing it. Now, I do this at frame stage. I got to check the stairway at frame because if it's wrong, this is the time to fix it not when it's done and beautiful. That's a multi-thousand dollar fix if you have to tear that apart. So, but I don't have the handrail, Dave. I don't have the pickets. I don't, well, I know by the plan it's going to be pickets or it might be a half wall or what, but I look at the plan and I try to determine, I'm, I've used a block of wood that I found on the site and I've tried to figure out where the pickets might be. So I laid it out and I said, okay, the pickets will be about here. And then I measure in 12 inches along the tread and then it goes back and then I go to there. Notice it's not up tight to the riser because remember the nosing is what I'm measuring to. And I come in and look, I've got 12 inches and I'm at 10 inches there. So it works, but that's how we measure the curved or winder stair. While I'm at it, I also tilt my, my deal up and I'll check the tread or the risers. In this case, they're all at roughly seven inches. So the treads work, the risers work. I'm done measuring. It took me a little while to punch out the stair, but then you just stand in the entry in awe of what the framer has done because it's a really beautiful job. So curve stairs, winder stairs, walkway measuring. You guys have got it. I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you on the next one.